Thanks, everybody, for uh, coming to another Molecular Devices uh, Imaging Webinar. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a very interesting one. Um, uh, I, I would like to um, go through some uh, housekeeping, uh, illustrate some housekeeping that uh, Mary Beth just spoke to. So um, uh, here's the, uh, if you need some time writing down what the uh, help is, if there's any technical issues. And then the, the point she made about sending Q&A, please send questions anytime. Uh, there should, you should be able to go to the top of your screen and press on the Q&A button. Um, you should then be able to type in a question. Uh, choose all panelists, both myself and um, Allison will uh, receive the question. But I will, I will compile them and <clears throat> ask similar questions at one time. Uh, make sure you press the send button and we'll see that. Um, yeah, please send them anytime and I'll uh, during the during the presentation, um, so the agenda is I will give a, uh, a short introduction to the Image, Image Express Icon and Screening Systems. Um, I'm the product manager for cellular imaging and monitor devices, and um, uh, Allison is using some of the tools in our products to uh, do the work she's doing. Uh, Allison uh, at, um, is let me is. We'll be talking about high content imaging analysis of cell sheet morphogenesis, utilizing in vitro tissue models. Uh, she uh, graduated from uh, the university uh, with a PhD from the University of Toronto, and then completed two postdoctoral fellowships: uh, the first in chemical biology at Harvard, and the second in pathology department at Stanford. Uh, she then returned to uh, University of Toronto, uh, where she is currently an assistant professor in the chemical engineering and applied chemistry uh, departments. Allison's research is focused on uh, engineering tissue morphogenesis to produce functional artificial tissues for, for regenerative medicine and drug screening applications. Specifically, her group creates engineering tools mimicking and quantitatively, uh, to mimic and, and quantitatively model tissue organizational processes that occur in, in the developing embryo. So I think it's quite an interesting set of, uh, of experiments Allison is going to walk us through, but first a little bit about uh, the Image Express and Icon and Screen systems that uh, are being used. Um, clearly, there are some challenges that we encounter today with live cell imaging. Uh, imaging cells, you want to image cells under physiological conditions. You want to maintain cells in focus and position over long periods of time. You want to minimize bleaching. And there's data management issues with um, um, uh, acquiring long time lapse analyses. Um, <clears throat> Math devices, uh, high quality screening system addresses not just uh, screening applications, but some of these live cell uh, uh, requirements. So on the top left, you have the uh, wide field image access micro. That is sort of the workhorse and uh, one of the, in the, the instruments that, uh, that Allison uses. We also have a image access micro, uh, image express ultra confocal high quality screening system. We can bring in third-party imaging uh, uh, images into our data, data management solution, MDC Store. All three of images generated from any of these uh, uh, systems uh, is brought, can be brought into uh, MDC Store. This is all tied together for analysis with MetaExpress and MetaExpress PowerCore, and uh, if, if needed, uh, Acuity Express for its selection. So a little bit about the image Express Micro. Uh, it's a wide field, uh, high content screen system. It's, it's automated for multi-well or in something, or just, uh, repeated, uh, imaging of a single, uh, position. Uh, there, it comes in two flavors, either the CCD or the more advanced SC mods for, uh, imaging three times the field of view. Uh, there's a, uh, broad selection of long life light sources that come with the system that I will detail in the, uh, subsequent slides. Uh, to keep your image, uh, image, uh, cells in focus, there's a, a robust laser autofocus, and there's a, quite a variety of magnifications you can run at from 1x to 100x, uh, allowing you to get uh, images of the cells at the resolution you require. And we, we uh, accommodate a flexible format from slides to 1536-volt plates. Um, for the live uh, live cell capabilities, you know, we have bright field and, and phase options with our, with our, with our products. Uh, there's a fluidic for adding, adding compounds and, and washing, washing the cells. Uh, we're, we're, um, compatible with a 
wide range of uh, robotics automation. Also for light cell, there's, um, we, we have the ability to control temperature, CO2, and humidity. And this all enables long time-lapse experiments. There was one in the inter slide, which was cells undergoing apoptosis. These, these cells were taken and are cells going, undergoing cytokinesis. Uh, it's about 1,400 minutes, which is um, on the order of 24 hours, and the cells are happy, uh, undergoing cell division, and you can monitor, with this tubulin stain, you can monitor the very, very ends of cytokinesis. This was an interesting paper in a webinar that um, was presented earlier, uh, and I'll have a link to our past webinars at the end of the, end of the deck. So, what, one of the things that's new um, with the Image Express Micro is the Excel model, which has the uh, SCMOS camera, which gives you a, a much larger field of view. So, on a standard system, a standard CCD system, on the left, you're looking at uh, the, a representative of a, of a 384 wall plate, and that's the field of view inside uh, the 384 of a 4X object, 4X imaged into that 384 well, so that's the portion you get. With the new XL system, you can get much larger than the 384 wall uh, with a single image at 4x, so driving driving uh, essentially three times the speed because you don't have to t a tile as many images. Also, that system came up with a solid state light source, so that gives you on the demand illumination, eliminates the, the, the shutter for mechanical, and that eliminates the mechanical of, of, of place for mechanical failure and reduce the support requirements because you don't need to change light bulbs or, or shutters. Also, we realized that um, just having that single solid state light source does not address everybody's application requirements, so we uh, added a number of different light sources that uh, give you the flexibility to address a variety of applications from UV, near-IR, ratiometric imaging, and fast excitation switching. So, uh, trying to keep Stay, in, stay flexible and address what those, those needs that uh, are required in the HCS community. So that's just on the acquisition side. You can acquire images of any anything now from 1 to 100x. So uh, we need to address assays from apoptosis to zebra fish, and here's a small list of those assays. And so we need to bring analysis tools from MetaExpress um, to, to address those needs. So MetaExpress software is based on Metamorph software. Metamorph is, a, is a, 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 an academic research tool for automated microscopy, um, and since we're based on that, we have all the all the tools behind uh, that come with Metamorph. Um, we have the application models for turnkey uh, screening, uh, turnkey screening requirements, and turnkey assays. We've got a new custom module uh, capability for developing uh, those modules. Um, and then reusing them as modules. And we have the full capability of Metamorph in the back end for uh, full customization with journals and macros. And so we're trying to address an analysis continuum uh, from turnkey to completely flexible. And we're going to go through a couple of these examples, starting from the applications that generate this comprehensive toolbox for your imaging needs. So a MetaExpress software application module sort of can walk away automation uh, gives you some advanced segmentation, side by side and cell by cell data, and it can be incorporated into a journal for 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 customization. Um, and some of the core capabilities of all all the analyses is the ability to segment uh, cells even when they are uh, in complete monolayers. Here's here's uh, uh, an overlay, and here's the ability to segment that into cytoplasm, nuclei, and apoptotic. You'll see some of the, uh, the this as a fundamental uh, capability of to, to that drives some of the assays that Allison is going to talk about. Also, <clears throat> with the new the new uh, version of MetaExpress, the ability to generate custom modules. This allows you to analyze more like segment bright field and case contrast images. Do some morph morphometric classifiers and create modules that allow you to do that. Finding objects inside objects. In this example, we're looking for puncture inside neurons or, or, or near the cell body. Um, and those little blue dots are, are being found uh, along those new lines. Um, once a, a custom module can, is used, it can be shared. It's easy to modify once it's created, uh, and it can be run without MetaExpress Power Core, which is uh, parallel processes. 
um, and these these headings once created can be added to the database. So I'm going to show you what what the interface looks like for the custom module side of things. It's sort of a unified, intuitive interface. Um, you can find your um, segmenta segmentation tools at the bottom and right at the top in a ribbon. As you create steps uh, for a module, they show up as discrete cards. Once you've ordered the cards, um, you do not need to recreate them. You can go in and just like a module, change parameters inside that, that card. And you can see your step-by-step -step segmentation in the films below so that you don't have to uh, run a, a macro uh, completely and then see results. You can just see what's happening as you go. But th those are sort of the, 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 the CAN modules, and I, those, are, those are modules and, and custom modules for, uh, that are used very frequently in, in screening. But you also have the full capabilities of Metamorph um, behind the scenes. And Allison has taken advantage of the, the tool multidimensional emotional analysis, which is within Metamorph. This is a tool that you can do object tracking and analysis in an automated fashion. Um, a variety of object ID and classification <coughs> routines can be used and allows you to track 2D or 3D movements. I think mostly Alice is going to be talking about 3D movements. So here's a cell that's being tracked and you can plot its, uh, its, its direction over time. But you can do more with it. You can also track multiple objects automatically and output a variety of measurements including velocity, distance, angle, position, and uh, some other measurements like intensity and area. So the image assessment system, we, we believe brings uh, a tool that alleviates not only your screen needs, but also my cell imaging challenges. You can keep cells under physiological conditions. You can keep cells in focus over long periods of time. Uh, cells continue to exhibit appropriate responses over the experimental time frame. And you uh, have tools to analyze and output data made from these uh, time cost measurements uh, as they imaged over time. On that note, I'd like to turn it over to Allison uh, to talk about uh, her work. Mary Beth. Is my, are my slides available now? Okay, well, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about some of the work that we've been doing in my lab at University of Toronto and using this high content imaging tool to analyze cell sheet morphogenesis. Um, so first of all, why are we interested in this problem? So just to give some context, um, I think it's a quite varied audience, so I wanted to just give a big, uh, bit of background around the kind of classical tissue engineering paradigm. So we start with potentially taking cells from the patient. We grow these up in vitro in some kind of cell manufacturing facility. We then combine these cells potentially with growth factors or instructive cues into some kind of biomaterial scaffold. And the scaffold organizes these cells, guides their behavior. Um, it, you can culture this in a bioreactor for some period of time to mature the tissue and then your scaffold itself also acts as a vehicle to implant this back into the person. So the idea would be that you could then generate tissues on demand to um, kind of address major regenerative medicine problems. So using this sort of classic paradigm of tissue engineering, there has been a reasonable amount of success. But as you'll see, it's been, you know, skin, cartilage, bladder, very simple tissues that have been designed using this protocol, often where uh, the tissues are very thin, so they don't necessarily have a blood supply, and they're also functionally relatively simple. So, you know, we haven't engineered a heart or a liver or a brain or something where it requires complex function. So some of the challenges for the future of tissue engineering um, that I see are really clinical relevance. So how can we build large enough tissues that function correctly and, and undergo complex functions? And that's probably going to require introducing blood vessels, etc. Um, so that's one problem. 
um, tissue remodeling and integration. So you form this great tissue in your bioreactor, and then you implant this into a person, and there's an immune response, an inflammation, and the whole tissue remodels. So how can we control and manage this? And then um, another issue, I think, is quantification, predictable design and reliability. So really basing these products on fundamental rules so that we know how they're going to behave. So my lab really has focused on the third of these columns. And another reason this might be important of this quantification and predictability is that then we could potentially use um, engineered tissues for drug screening purposes. So if we have a thing that's very predictable, then it's going to allow us to screen. So, so in thinking about that, how can we quantify and understand the design of a tissue to produce a more reliable product? So in my lab, we've been thinking about, well, the ultimate production of a tissue is during embryo development. So can we build systems to mimic embryo development and try and understand the rules of tissue construction um, so that we can build um, more predictable products and understand these design rules. So if we look at a video here of a zebrafish embryo developing, um, it undergoes a lot of stages. So it starts as a very simple ball of cells. It forms more complex structures and form these very simple structures through a series of folds or rolls. There's lots of cell reorganization going on in response to growth factors and stresses. And it's a very complicated situation. But if we break it down as engineers and think about what are the unit operations that we require to build a tissue or an organ, we can really break them down into four operations that any combination of these in, in a specific order would allow you to generate your tissue. So you need to be able to produce materials to build your tissue, um, so that would be cells and protein. You need to uh, sort and pattern your uh, cells into uh, to specify a particular outcome of, of what that cell should be. You need to actually construct your tissues, so maybe you assemble parts, maybe you take you know, a block and sculpt it. Maybe you fold uh, a sheet into a more complex structure. And then you also have to mature yourself. So uh, differentiate them, potentially polarize them, and form specialized features such as cilia. And um, if we think about these uh, unit operations, the kind of materials generation and maturation really represents the stem cell problem. So a lot of engineers have been thinking about this, of how do you produce lots of stem cells and how do you mature them into the cell type you want. So where my lab has really focused is on the other two unit operations of patterning and construction. So how do we take cells and 